Well, I hope you guys had a great weekend. I sure had a trying one because I tried to do electrical work, which electricians should be the only ones that do. I have a panel of switches, that is three switches in like one area. So it's a, a dumb switch or an old school switch. Then I have a smart switch and then a dumb switch again. But whoever installed it previously before I bought this house, put the switches on the wrong side. So the switch on the left turned on and off power to what is on the right side of the room and the switch on the right side turns off power and on turns power on to what is on the left side of the room. It was driving me nuts. And I'm, I was thinking, you know, have some business sense, some common sense. I could figure this out. Pull off the top. Move the switches around. Don't touch the middle one. Just take the two out. Flip them around. Put them back in. Both of those switches work. But the middle one that I didn't even touch doesn't work anymore. What the heck? If you want patience in your life, go try to do some electrical work. Oh my goodness. I didn't even touch the middle switch and it's not working. So that was that was my weekend summed up in one activity. Welcome to How to Build a Tent, the podcast on how to make you successful. My name is Matt Williams. Thank you for listening to the show, sharing the show especially this show. I want you, or I should say it this way. My goal for this show is to see people sharing this show with the caption, Elizabeth Warren gets destroyed. One of the things I was doing while I was on my projects was listening to Democrat candidates like Elizabeth Warren, who drives me absolutely nuts. And she was just saying some nonsense. So I need to talk about this stuff There's because she's touting these economic policies, these economic lies. She's throwing Reagan under the bus and reinterpreting history. She's making it seem like the government is this white knight that should be involved in all of our affairs. It's scary. It's dangerous. She knows exactly what she's doing. She's really smart. And she's relying on a group of dumb voters to elect her to be the president. Super scary. And I think she, you know, I don't know. She may have a chance. She may have a chance. And a big business is really scared. If you remember the news talking about how she is not going to get big Democrat donors because she's a true believer. Not like the Clintons who were opportunistic. They were in it for the money. I mean, they were, you know, Hillary Clinton was more progressive than Bill Clinton was from what I understand. But they would all do it for the money. Elizabeth Warren really believes this stuff. She lives in her fairy tale land of professorship in Harvard or wherever she teaches. Wherever... Uh, they let Indians in, even though they're not Indians. So we're going to talk about that today. I have two clips that I cut up and I'm going to talk about because there's like really critical things here that we should understand and we should be able to address these and talk about these, these business issues, these economic issues to our friends that talk about them with us or some liberals that we're engaging with. We should be able to call out these things because they're not difficult to defend or to rebuke. So it's going to be a fun day. I'm going to get my electrical frustration out. So if you have any questions, comments, you can reach out to me at howtobuildatent.com. You can share the show. You can subscribe to us. You can see us live streaming on how to build a tent on all the social media sites, YouTube, youtube.com slash how to build a tent. So excited. We finally got that fixed. Thank you for all those who decided to subscribe and help us get to over the hundred where it allows us to do that. Really appreciate that. And the last thing before we get going, we are part of the fight, laugh, feast network. You can go over to fight, and you'll get one of these mugs. I, it was really sad and also kind of encouraging. I had my first email from somebody whose mug broke. And I'm thinking, out of all the, the mugs that I've sent out, only one of them is broken so far. I think that's amazing that we can ship things that are fragile. And if you, you know <laughs> the shipping, the logistics industry, the airline industry, they don't really treat your stuff well. But having the success of having my first mug after almost two years of doing this be broken after all of those mugs we've sent. So I've, I felt really bad. That mug is getting reshipped out as soon as possible. I've already contacted the suppliers. But anyways, all that to say, you'll get a mug and join the many people who have become members of the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network, getting tons of great content and helping support us and keeping us 
on the air, keeping us coming out with new content, new apps. And in December, you get the first month month free. You get a first month free, you get this mug, and you get whatever the Fight Laugh Feast benefits are at the time of the tiers, depending on what tier you get. You get the mug no matter what tier you're at. And you get the first month free, I believe, no matter what tier you're at as well, which is really cool. I just spilled my coffee. This is another just, you know, sum up my weekend. I didn't even get to finish my coffee. I brushed my teeth for the show. And, you know, you can't drink coffee after you brush your teeth. That's just the worst idea in the world. So here we go. The uncaffeinated version of Elizabeth Warren takedown. Nearly 40 years ago, Ronald Reagan declared that the problem with the economy was big government. He claimed that government hurt economic growth and limited freedom, and he was determined to weaken the government's role in markets. So, well, Elizabeth Warren decides to call out one of the most successful presidents of history who turned the tide of inflation and sky high, sky high interest rates. They were like at 18, 19%. Could you imagine buying a house at 18 or 19%? She's going after him. He reverses, reverses the downward trend of the economy. It's booming. There's investment going on. There's growth in revenue. There's growth in GDP. It totally reversed what Carter had done and previous presidents. And not to mention he won the Cold War. And created an environment for the 90s to happen. And Elizabeth Warren is getting over and she's saying he was wrong, that government isn't the problem. See, she thinks government's the solution. And we'll see this through all of her clips. She thinks that they are the most equitable, fair, and prosperous vehicle for our society is big government. It's not business. It's not freedom. It's not the individual. It's big government. These are the candidates that the Democrats are putting forward. And she's going after the most obvious, the most obvious counterpoints to her claims. Ronald Reagan is antithetical to her and her positions. And now she is trying to rewrite history to make her position look right when it is clearly wrong. If you go back and you look at the circumstances that Ronald Reagan had when he entered office and where the economy and the country and businesses, financial situations, interest rates. If you look at that, even tax income, tax revenues, they went up with tax cuts. If you look at all that, you cannot say Ronald Reagan was not a success. If you even remember back in the Barack Obama days, when he was running for president, he would even talk about Ronald Reagan in a positive way and how he is the new Ronald Reagan. So she has the audacity to go after him like he was wrong, like he was a bad president, that he didn't know what he was talking about. Absolutely amazing. And for the record, Reagan is two for two. He had two successful two successful presidents, presidencies. How many successful socialist presidents have there been? If you're watching at home, I put a big zero up in the camera. It's a big goose egg. Not one time has socialism worked. And yet she is going after one of the most successful presidents in in history. Absolutely amazing. All right, let's continue. But things didn't work out as he promised. But things didn't work out as he promised. F- noted from the speech. So what is notable from this is she doesn't give any examples of what he promised and didn't work out. As government pulled back, the rich and powerful stepped in. A small group of wealthy elites and giant corporations gained more control over both our economy and over our democracy. Okay, so she's setting up the battlefield now. She's setting up the players, the camp, the access and the allies. Government versus big business versus rich, successful millionaires and billionaires. Oh, well, they really can't say millionaires because most of them are all millionaires. The billionaires, the successful businesses, these are the people that are robbing people of their freedom, robbing people of their rights. And we need big government to step in. And what she is failing to mention is that when those big companies do well, when those rich people are successful, society is successful. Case in point, Ronald Reagan. 
She is just trying to rewrite history. But if you go back and look, the middle class was successful. It was growing. People were not leaving the middle class to become poor. They were leaving the middle class to become rich. And yet she's trying to frame it the other way around. And also, just to remind you, for those of you who are just starting to listen to the show, because we add listeners all the time, the people that benefit from large companies doing well in a fair society, not when they're, you know, crony capitalism and all that stuff, but the people that are successful or that benefit from the success of large companies are anyone who has a 401k, anyone who has stock in Amazon, Disney, Google, what other big company do you want to talk about? Because if, if you notice, there's not a class requirement to invest in these companies. You don't have to be rich, upper class, super successful to invest in these companies. You can be low class. You can be low class, low class, the poor class. What is the low class? Middle class. And then whatever other classes there are, <laughs> you can invest in any companies that you can, that you have the money to invest in. There's no class requirements. So there means that your 401k that you are investing in through your company, through your retirement fund, if you're a union, you have pensions, if you're a government, you have pensions. All of these people are investing in these companies and get wealthier, make more money when these big companies do better. When rich people do better, they invest and they build and they grow more companies, more capital, more profits. All of those things are used to grow and raise the tide for everybody. But she doesn't bring that up because she's trying to make them look evil and that they are stealing from you and they are attacking you and you have to defend yourself from them by giving power to the government. It's very dangerous. Reagan had it wrong. Our problem isn't big government. Our problem is a government that has been captured by the rich and the powerful. She's right there. The problem isn't the government per se, because the government doesn't work without people. The problem is that the government has been captured by rich people. Now, what is the solution to that? Well, you stop letting rich people influence the government. You stop letting crony capitalism happen. And you do that, there's only one way to do it. It's not communism, it's not socialism. If you've noticed, there's still a select group of rich people in Russia. There's still a select group of rich people in Venezuela, in North Korea. It's a much smaller group than in Western societies that embrace capitalism like ours, but it's still a small select group of people while everyone else starves. There's one solution to getting crony capitalism out of our government. It's the 10th Amendment. It's removing power from one place where everyone can easily go and live. The most rich area in our country now is Washington, D.C. The most rich zip codes in our country right now are all around Washington, D.C. Because everyone's getting rich off the government. The only way that we are going to stop this from happening, that Warren says is a problem, that I agree is a problem, these big people are influencing government to favor themselves, to protect themselves, to create moats for themselves, primarily through the Democrat Party, but also Republicans. The only way to solve this is not anything that Elizabeth Warren is proposing, but it's the 10th Amendment. It's giving power back to the states. It is a lot harder for even big businesses to lobby, to spend money, and to exert its will over 50 states. And that's what it would take. If all the power was in the states and not in the federal government, or if most of the power, especially regarding economics and our economy and business and all that stuff, if it was all in the states and not in one spot, big businesses would have a lot harder time of getting everyone to play by their rules and get everyone to give them favors, to give them subsidies, to give them benefits. Because all it would take is one state not to do it for whatever company and everyone else would go to that com- go to that state and they would grow and they would create a hub and they would create an investment. We see that in states like Atlanta, in um, Georgia, sorry. In, uh, in Atlanta, a city that is 
a hub now for movie production because they created incentives other states didn't have that drove people there to shoot movies. And that's what would happen. And so if you are sick of crony capitalism, if you are sick of rich people controlling the government to give them favors at your expense, which I agree is a problem, don't vote for Elizabeth Warren. A vote, for, vote for a convention of states. Vote for constitutional politicians who are going to live by the 10th Amendment that gives all states' rights back to the state, gives all the states back their rights and states' rights. That's the solution to this problem that Elizabeth Warren is talking about. Government could help grow the economy, could create opportunities, could support small businesses and entrepreneurship, but instead we have a government that works only for those at the top. They could. I agree. Again, Elizabeth Warren, I agree with you. They could help businesses grow. They could help with investments, but not the way she's talking about spending trillions of dollars. It's about getting out of the way. It's about getting out of the way, just like what Ronald Reagan said. And he proved it. Her policies only work in textbooks. They don't work in the economy. Ronald Reagan's ideas don't work in textbooks, but they work in our economy. Or maybe this was a better way to say it. Elizabeth Warren's policies work in textbooks, but they don't work for our pocketbooks. Ronald Reagan's policies don't work in textbooks, but put money in our pocketbooks. Yeah, I like that. That's a good one. Elizabeth Warren is dangerous. All right, last clip, and then we got a break. Reagan liked to talk about freedom, but real freedom isn't living under the thumb of a handful of billionaires and giant corporations. Real freedom isn't living deep in debt one health scare or one broken transmission away from disaster. Real freedom isn't watching while more and more opportunities get snatched up by the rich and powerful. Real freedom comes when a strong government enforces fair rules and when smart investments give every American the opportunity to prosper. This is the part that really scares me. And it doesn't just scare me with Elizabeth Warren, but all of these progressives, big government politicians, they are defining freedom in this way. Freedom is being uh, escaping from being out of the control of big business, of these individuals. And it's giving power to the government. It's taking your freedom, it's taking your fate away from business, from private enterprise, from a group of small people, and giving it to one entity, the government. That's where if you have a health scare, you won't go bankrupt. If any X bad thing happens to you, you will be saved. The government is your God. The government will protect you. The government will keep any harm from ever coming your way. Just give all of the power to us. Remember, big business, the stock exchange, all of these rich people, they're us. It's individualism. It's private sector, free market capitalism. And that's the enemy to them. And if it's the enemy to them, they're the enemy to us. Because we enjoy the same freedoms as the rich people. We enjoy the same freedoms as these big businesses. And if they take them away from them, they're going to take it away from us. You can't have it both ways. You can't take the freedom away from the rich and from the big businesses and leave it to the poor. What society has that ever happened to? where the rich lost their freedom, but the poor kept it. It's a facade, it's a lie, it's a smokescreen. They don't care about the rich people's freedoms. They want yours. And they're just using them as a straw man. This isn't about the rich. There's always gonna be a rich. There's always gonna be a concentrated power. It's just how much of it is gonna be spread to other people, to 
the citizenry. Citizenry? Yeah, that's the word. <sighs> Guys got to study history. We got to be aware of this stuff. All right, I am going to take a break. Oh, I just dropped it. But I wanted to show you guys, for those of you watching, I mentioned this before. This is a good Christian uh, brother. We see him. I see him on Facebook, talk with him a lot. We uh, DM. He has a company, Kingsman Beard Bomb. I talked about it before and I made a mistake. Yes, yes, yes. I make mistakes. And you're like, I know. I listen to your shows all the time. You make mistakes every single show. Can you like tighten that up, please, and get a better show? I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to improve every day. Kingsman Grooming Products USA. And I say USA because I gave the wrong address for the international brand of this company and they called me out on it, rightfully so. I apologize deeply. KingsmanGroomingPros.com. One word, KingsmanGroomingPros.com. Go get these gifts for, if you're a wife, the men in your life, the husband, maybe it's a young teenager who's growing that reformed beard. This, these products are fantastic. I've been using them. I've never used beard products before. See, I'm reforming myself more every day. I'm starting to use Kingsman uh, beard products. But this uh, beard oil, the, the cherry tobacco, I put that on after a shower, and then I let my beard dry, and then I put this beard balm on. I don't know if that's how I'm supposed to do it, but I've been doing it. My wife loves the smell. My son, he's a year and a half years old. He's like He's grabbing my beard and rubbing it more. It's just the most adorable thing in the world. So do yourself a favor or do someone you love a favor, do a friend a favor or do an enemy a favor and, you know, love people that don't love you. Give them this gift for Christmas or just go give it to them just because. Kingsman Beard Products can go kingsmangroomingpros.com, kingsmangroomingpros.com. Go support a Christian company and go do yourself a favor and get some great products. So I, again, apologize for the terrible, terrible mishap of giving the wrong email or the wrong web address. Okay, a few more clips, we're going long. I gotta stop, but I just wanted to hit this with uh, a few more clips because this is absolutely amazing. So today, in market after market, a handful of big players dominate. Four giant companies control the entire market for beef. Okay, now this is where the practical is, where she's starting to actually name things that we can nail her down to, which is, exactly what we want when we're debating somebody. We want them to stop talking in generalities like she's been doing so far and give specifics. So she's saying that there is a select group of people and businesses that control beef. And because of that, there's injustice happening. There's our freedoms are being taken away, which I have to say, I've been pretty happy with our beef quality lately. I haven't seen any beef recalls. I haven't uh, had any complaints about my steak, my ribeyes, my beef bones, my you know, smoked meat. Have you? I think beef's been pretty good to me lately. It hasn't killed anyone that I've known of, that I've heard of. So I'm not complaining. But let me just say this. Her solution is more government. Her solution is the government telling businesses what to do. If the food industry is a problem, that she says it is, because there's a concentration amount of people, listen to this. There are 3,000 state, local, and tribal agencies that have primary responsibility to regulate and the retail food and food service industries in the United States. 3,000. And she wants more government. See, this is the dirty little secret. The more regulated an industry is, the more concentrated a power there is. And so she is, again, rewriting history. She's stating facts that aren't facts. She's calling lies truth and truth lies. She wants to concentrate more power in Washington, D.C. She wants to grow the government because of this villain that is the small group of rich people in those large corporations. But the dirty secret is, is those rich people in those large corporations want a bigger government because that's what creates these industries that have these silos around them, that have these moats around them. It's the regulations. It's these big governments because... It's a barrier to entry. If the beef industry was totally hands off, there was no regulations. If the food industry had no government compliance, you know, agencies and all those things, and there was a select group of people, select group of companies making tons and tons of money, then other companies would come in and grow cattle. They would come in and grow beef. 
they would come in and try to take market share because it's so profitable. That's how the free market works. It's a beautiful thing, but it can't happen when there's all these barriers primarily from the government. It doesn't allow for competition. It doesn't allow for entrepreneurship. It doesn't allow for innovation. And so we do get stuck with these problems of these small group of people that continue to pay government money, can donations, you know, lobbying and all those things to keep the government involved. The exact thing she's arguing for is the problem. And she's trying to twist it around and she knows it's the problem. She's a Harvard freaking professor. She's not stupid. She knows it's the problem and she's just lying to us. She's just trying to manipulate us. All right, I'm going to stop there because we're super late. I had like four more clips, but I hope that's enough ammunition against Elizabeth Warren that you can take and prove and show when people quote her and share this stuff that you can have a rebuttal about the lies and evil that she's doing. Go out, be successful in your argumentation and your businesses. We'll talk to you next time. God bless.